What's up everybody, Dustin Tinkler here. And today we are going to be creating foliage for Unreal Engine 4 using atlases from Quixel Megascan. First, we're gonna bring that atlas into Maya, model up our fern, bring that fern into Unreal Engine and use Quixel Megascan's atlas material instances to create the shader for use in Unreal Engine 4. So first we're gonna start off in bridge, so let's get going. All right, so here in bridge, we're gonna select atlases and we're gonna select fern. We'll scroll down to find this sword fern. I need to first download the asset to my Quixel Bridge library. So I'll select download. I've already downloaded it though. So once it's downloaded, we'll have these export settings. So what I want to do is I want to download this to my computer. So first we're gonna say export to, we're gonna scroll all the way down and select custom disk export. We're gonna select a path and we'll hit export. So once we've exported that to our drive, we can see that we've got a preview here along with the uh, necessary maps. So with this, let's go ahead and jump over to Maya and get started. So the first thing I need to do in Maya is create a material. I'll just create a Lambert and we'll call this M underscore Fern. Let's go ahead and let's path the color. So I'll select the albedo. And lastly, we need to set the transparency. Make sure you're selecting the opacity as the translucency will be used in Unreal Engine to fake the subsurface color. All right, now that we have this material imported, I'm gonna create a plane. I'm gonna set that plane to 100 centimeters, both in the height and the width. I'm going to take these subdivisions and bring those down to one. And then I'll right click, assign existing, and select our fern material. Now it's not gonna show up because I need to hit six to go into shaded mode. I'll go into top view, hit six, turn off my grid, and we're just gonna start modeling this. I'm gonna start to separate, add some subdivisions to separate the fern with multi-cut. I'm gonna hold down control and hover and left click in between each of these fern strands. Next, I'm gonna hold control and middle mouse button to throw in an edge loop in the center of each of these. I'll select these faces and hit extract. And then I'll repeat that by hitting the G key to repeat last command. Now select all of these and I'll hit center pivot. And now I can just start to move these off and think about them individually. So I'm going to start by isolating one of these by hitting control and the number one. And we're going to start to model this. I'm going to go into vertex mode and move my vertex and you'll see that the texture moves with the vertex. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control shift and right click and I'll select preserve UV. Now, when I select the vertice and move it, my UV is preserved. So with that setting set, I'm going to go ahead and add another edge loop down the center. I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm just going to start to model this tree up, positioning it and lining up this center with the center center of the fern. Next, I'm going to scale in these UVs to try to get this to fit as close as possible as to minimize overdraw. Once that's completed, I'm going to select the center and I'm just going to move it up. Lastly, I'll use a deformer to bend the fern. But before that, I'm going to set the pivot to the base of the stem. With the mesh selected, I'll select deform, nonlinear, bend. I'm gonna raise the curvature a bit so we can get oriented with the deformer. And then I'm gonna orient the deformer with my mesh. Once I'm happy with the way that the fern looks, I'm gonna select the fern and delete the history. Once again, I'm going to move the pivot back to the stem. This is looking a little low res, so I'm gonna add in some more geometry. I'm gonna use multi-cut with control and middle mouse click to add in a loop. Then I'm gonna select the loop, shift right click, edit edge flow. I'm gonna repeat that with the G key for the rest of the loops that were added. I'm gonna unhide the rest of my ferns and repeat that process.
All right, with the modeling completed, now I'm just going to start to arrange the ferns uh, in an interesting way. So I'm just going to start to take these and uh, duplicate them and rotate them and, uh, and again, just arrange them all in a pleasing way. I'm going to go ahead and change my object sorting settings. So it's a little easier for me to work here in Maya. Looks like I forgot to raise the center of some of these. But this is a good point to go in and say, I can come in here and change every single characteristic of each of these ferns. These all don't have to be uh, exactly the same. If I want to take this and uh, set the pivot to here and, you know, bend this uh, bend this leaf here. I just need to make sure that I do have preserve UV off because at this point I do want the texture to move with the geometry. I'm just going to take a quick look at it from as many angles as I can. Uh, if I want, I could uh, start to scale some of these uh, to be larger. Just trying to get some variation uh, in here. I would come in and let's twist these a little bit. I'm going to hit Control-1 to isolate this. All right, and with that, I think our modeling is complete. Let's go ahead and combine this. We'll bring this into Unreal and we'll set up the material. So I'm going to select Combine, I'm going to delete the history and freeze my transforms, and we'll rename this to SM underscore Fern. I'm going to use a game exporter. I'm going to set this to export selection. I'm going to check on smoothing groups, check off tangents and binormals and everything else. I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to select export to multiple files. I'm going to make sure I have move to origin set and I'll choose my directory. Select export and let's launch Unreal. All right, in Unreal, what we're going to do first is import our FBX. So simply drag and drop the FBX onto the window. I'm going to make sure auto generate collision is set to off. And under material, I'm going to make sure that import method is set to do not create material and import textures is unchecked. With that selected, I'll hit import all and we've imported our static mesh. Next, we need to create the material and import the textures. I'm going to do this manually and then I'm going to do this with Quixel Bridge. So to import the textures, I'm simply going to select all the textures and drag and drop them into my fern folder. Next, we'll right click and select new material. I'm going to call this SM Fern Example. We'll open up our material. We'll bring in all of our maps and start to plug them in. We'll start with the albedo. We'll plug that directly into base color. Next, we'll select the AO, plug that in. Then the translucency will end up being used for subsurface color. Our roughness, we will, we will plug into the roughness input. Our opacity, we will plug into opacity mask. Make sure to plug that into mask and not opacity. Our normal will go into normal and our displacement, we will delete. Let's do some quick organizing here. Now we have to make some material changes. So the first thing that we need to do is change our blend mode from opaque to mask. You'll see that once we do that, our opacity mask slot is open and we are masking out our fern texture. It's not double-sided yet. We don't have our subsurface color working. So to do that, we need to set the shading model from default lit to a two-sided fold. Once we do that, you'll see that the subsurface color is now acting properly, but we're still not rendering it on both sides. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and check on two sided. With that checked on, we can go ahead and save the material, apply it to the mesh. 
and drag and drop the mesh into our scene. With the mesh in our scene, we can move around and we can see that the subsurface color is working, that the masking is working, and the material is looking correct for the most part. But let me go ahead and show you an even easier way. We're gonna go back to Bridge and I'm gonna set my export settings back to Unreal Engine. So instead of selecting custom disk, we're gonna scroll back up to the top, select Unreal Engine. We'll select our engine version, make sure that our installation folder is set properly. And I'm gonna leave my project location empty because that will just add it into whatever project I have open. Now with this open, I'm going to hit export. I'm going to switch back over to Unreal and we'll see that it will import all of our assets from Quixel Bridge. So what we get is we have all of our textures imported just like before and we have a material created. If I open up this material, we see that it's a material instance. The settings and the setup for this instance are very similar to what we had, except we've got some extra functionality in here. So we've got some uh, material settings so we can adjust the color intensity. So if I want to intensify this color here, we can do so. So once you see that I've got the material assigned to the fern, we can go back to the material instance and we can start to play with these settings. We can adjust the color tint. We can set some color variation. So as I duplicate this and move it, it's going to have some different uh, color settings based on its location. Let's crank that up a bit more. I don't really recommend this setting, but as I move this around, we'll see that based on its location, the value of the color of the texture is changing on the fly. We've got some other settings here, like normal intensity and roughness intensity and so on and so forth. So just to show you where this is, if I select this and we go to uh, Megascans, Megascans presets, we expand the presets and we go to Atlas material. This is the material or the master material that that instance if we scroll up to here, we can see the functionality for color. We've got color intensity where we're just multiplying by the albedo input. We've got a color tint that we're then applying to that. And we've got a color variation here. Roughness, we have another multiply parameter, opacity, same thing. Normal map, another intensity slider. We've got displacement there for when we, uh, when and if we want it. Translucency, and we've got some simple wind setup. It can be quite handy uh, to have this, but there are two ways to get your atlases from Quixel Bridge into Unreal Engine.